Hello, everybody, and welcome to December 2nd Sunday, right? We have arrived. We are here, December 12th, the gateway, the 12 days that we have right now before the 21st. Uh, for you just seeing me for the first time, I am Jessica Ulstrom, and I am um, the creator of the quantum method and quantum fitness. And I have a community where I, you know, share uh, a channeled idea of how the ascension is unfolding for the very, you know, human embodied experience. You know, how does this ascension affect the mom and the job and the money and the body? And it's really about getting really grounded in, in what we're here to do here and how we get to do it and how we really get to create our own reality. And so if you've been following me or studying with me, you've probably been seeing that this last quarter, I have been giving you guys really deep, deep, long novel type blogs to kind of help you with your checklist of, of where you could really quantum leap right now. You know, we, we've been talking last month about how December 21st is like the, the new gaming system has arrived. Your virtual reality console has been upgraded and you are free to move in a vibrational harmony with the fifth dimension now right? It's open. Now, a lot of people have already been there. You know, I mean, somebody's got to build the groundwork, right? But now it's it's literally physically embodying. And, and what that means for us is that when we really get embodied and we really choose more deliberate focus of our own universe, right? And we start to create our own reality from within ourselves, become sovereign beings, then very naturally we upgrade and can move into that higher space of creation, right? Third dimension feels very limited. It's the game of suffering. It's the game of separation. It's one step, you know, 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. It's you have to lose something in the name of love. You have to turn your volume down, right? You get attacked for being authentic. It's just like, ugh. but our job there was really to learn to focus. Our job there was to remember ourselves in that chaos. Our job was to come home to ourselves. Our job was to re-embody all of those fractal consciousnesses of ourselves and bring them back in. And once they are in, then we can remember who we are and how we are and, and how this really very like sophisticated quantum bio suit that we're wearing works because you know i don't want people to get scared and think oh december 21st i'm not going to be able to go to 5d i didn't get through jess's checklist right well you have to understand and I've, I've gotten this email a lot over the month is it's not a place it's not like the ship has arrived and you're not ready it's a mindset right this is a virtual holographic universe and so you're you're going to be kind of playing one foot in, one foot out for a while if you haven't let go of your old story. If you haven't, you know, really like become a union with this body, because those are things that are going to absolutely need over there. The union and the embodiment of higher self in the physical form, right? Because again, fifth dimension is is a, is actually not going to be the place. It's more of where we literally lay the groundwork for choice and discernment and becoming. It's where we get to practice. It's where we get to play. It's like a big playground, right? Therefore, right, it, you're going to be kind of faced with everything that is not in alignment for you to be able to safely be in your body, to safely be best friends with this body, to be your own gift, right? To be in your own presence, right? And this idea of what it's going to require for you to afford, interesting language here, this new console or this upgraded dimensional space, new playground is all about the relationship that you have with yourself. This is where we are, right? This entire last three years, 
COVID, pandemic, world's going crazy, separating rules, authority issues, everything that the universe could help us with, every negative is a shortcut, is about compressing you into you. Everything, every toxic relationship, every lost opportunity has been about return home, return home, return home. You know, ladies, especially how much time have we spent thinking about what other people are thinking? What about what they what they need? How can we help them? What would they you know, what is going through their mind? How many of you guys have literally studied other people's astrology more than your own? Because again, if they could just behave, if they could just do, if we could just be, if this could just work, then I could be happy. Then I could really share myself. Then I could really, you know, uh, open my gifts. And that has been backwards, right? I know that's the way we kind of got pushed into our learning, but really what it's about now is return home, return home to this universe. This is all you have nobody's coming, right? And when this gets online, when you turn yourself on, right, then you start to remember and remind this entire system. Because the system has not worked for us when we have been waiting for other people, needing through codependency, right, Um, begging, um, settling, pleading, going without, right? Suffering is never fully worked because that's not how it was designed, right? And so right now we have this 12 day period where December 12th to December 21st, an interesting language that came through the channel this morning that I'd like to reference in the Latin definition is purgatory, right? Catholic, Catholic place of suffering so that you can go to heaven, right? Well, when we really break down the word, It's more about purging and cleansing. Now, there is an innocence to you that you really need to get back to in order to understand that you have always done the best that you can. Everything that went wrong probably ultimately came from a very good intention, right? We're human. We want attention. We want love. We want, you know, we want compassion. And through that wanting, We believed that the way that we would teach the world to treat us that way was by providing that. And so we treated others better than we treated ourselves because in hopes that that would come back and and it would be paid forward. But ultimately in the third dimension, you'd think that like attracts like. Wow, I'm very compassionate. I can attract someone compassion. But in my search for being compassionate to others. If I disregard, abandon, or reject myself in the process, it acts like karma. What we're dealing with right now, this 12-day period, is what we call the karmic shift. And it's uncomfortable, right? Because we are literally kind of being put into this space of saying, all right, you are perfect. You never were broken. You were never like, you know, not chosen. You were never not special, right? You were never not gifted. You had the same hardware, the same computer system, the same level of consciousness, you know, the same limitations to work through in different paradoxes, right? Some physical, some emotional, some chemical, some theoretical, right? We've we've taken all of our baggage and we've like literally jammed it in this body and then tried to spend 40, 50, 60 years getting out of the body, meditating to go home when the whole idea was let's sit in our own mess and let's look at what we're creating around us to see what is actually the relationship that I have with myself, right? Every reflective object people, place, and thing is a marker for you to have an indication of the relationship that you're having with you, you, universe, you, inverse, your verse, your story, your perspective, your hologram, your virtual reality. 
and the simulation through conscious awareness, choice, discernment, limitation, lack, suffering, you know, karmic imprints, Akashic records, all of those goodies are literally all at play here. And we have attracted circumstances and events and people to show us where we are not in alignment with us. All right. Everything, every narcissistic relationship, every time you, you know, unrequited love, every heartbreak, every missed opportunity, every body issue, right? Every money issue, our, our, our hurry up and wait and time, everything has about, about the idea that I must be patient and wait for God. I must be patient and wait for my abundance and I must be patient and wait for other people. And when we do that, we provide what we believe other people, places, and things are going to need to help us be more of ourselves. And so this idea that I've created with quantum fitness is that the weight and the patience is actually what is creating the density in your game. Because your job as this archetypal like version of your highest level of consciousness and your lowest level of consciousness all in one body is about designing to use what you have, where you have, what time you have, only what you have to move to the next level of your own perception and awareness of your own love, right? It's, it's this mixed, weird earth game in the third dimension that taught us to be selfless and getting love from other people and success and money was how we made it, right? But the happiest people in the world probably have less than you do and spend their entire day working on their relationship with themselves and they are considered sovereign. And that means free, right? It's like, what is your quest right now? If I was gonna say, hey, welcome to 5D, it's your ultimate playground. What would yours look like? You know, what would your definition of freedom look like? What would your definition of abundance look like? What would your definition of health and vitality look like? What would you do with your time, right? How would you spend time? What would you say, right? Who would you want to play with? So if you really sit back and you look at, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm running out of time, you know, 5D is right there and I'm still running the old model and, and I don't have enough money to get over to 5D or buy the, you know, PS5 like game system because it's too expensive and now it's on eBay and it's overpriced, you know, it's the idea that, that it's not fair, I can't have what I want and what's the point? This is what I hear every day unconsciously in my sessions. So I've been mentoring for 15 years now, and anytime I get someone on my virtual screen, I hear three different perspectives, the me, myself, and I. Hey, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm good, Jess. No, you're not, right? Inner child saying, I'm stuck, I'm trapped, I'm bored, right? No one hears me, it's not fair, everyone's moving ahead, I don't have what I need, right? The higher self is like, sit in that. Look at that. Feel that. Ego is like, how do I protect her from feeling that pain? You know, how do I blame? How do I project? How do I move out of this discomfort so that I can protect this inner child here? And this is really where my job is, is to kind of lay all three out, talk to each three, you know, multiple use, having a very different experience in your own life. Have you noticed how different you are with different situations, right? And, and I think a lot of us have really moved away from that double life syndrome and are moving into that wholeness. But, but just think about for a minute, what did you have to lose? You know, who did you have to lose? How did you have to create boundaries that were super uncomfortable just to do the thing that we're here to do naturally is to first and foremost have this incredible, loving marriage with ourselves. And then that complemented will attract complementary being, beings, places, and things. But until we get this right, right, until we get back online and turn ourselves on, be attracted to ourselves, keep our own word, be consistent with what we're doing, right? And ultimately, not from a selfish place of, of you know, 
disregard of others, but keeping our integrity for our highest level of our goals, desires, dreams, health, right? Um, integrity, moral compass needs to come from this me, myself, and I place before it is designed with other people and other places. So you came into a family and you had an original design. You were like, okay, I'm coming in with my limits and I'm coming in with my potentials. You know, I'm, I'm a version of all of me, alchemy, all of me. And I am here to embody and integrate the parts of me that don't know or understand or have been um, moved away from love and the parts of me that remember it wholeheartedly. My journey here is to become me, become the I am, right? So the body is quickly taught that the rules and the way the world works is through the family order, right? So it's no longer your own counsel. It's no longer your own choice. It's no longer your own abundance. It's no longer your own freedom. You are taught very quickly that your everything revolves around someone else's mood, decisions, level of abundance, you know, ideas, level of control. And, and we begin to like bend our puzzle piece into the shape that would best help us with self-preservation, get us the most attention, help us be seen and heard, or help us hide, right? Help us not be seen and heard, help us manipulate the energy of the family so we could try to be a little bit of ourselves. And then we found ourselves in the second space of that school or church or society-based um, you know, model where now it's like, okay, I have to be, I have these rules at home. I have these rules at school. I have these rules at church. I have these rules out here with my friends. And so it's just like, all we've been doing is moving further and further and further and further and further away from ourselves. And what happens is the reason why we get so obsessed with people, places, and things is the further away we get from ourselves, then, you know, higher self is, is literally always trying to get that magnetic pulse back to yourself. So a lot of times it will put some person, place, or thing in your environment that feels like you. And that's usually when... <laughs> obsessive like oh my god I'm obsessed with you I'm obsessed with you and really what you're obsessed with is that that is the closest version to what your soul frequency is and you believe that that you need that person to feel alive to feel loved to feel uh, you know wanted and desired and needed and appreciated and really that person's been put in your holographic space to move you through back to you. Now, here's how you know if that person was put in your life, that thing was put in your life, or that place was put in your life to move you closer to yourself, it doesn't last. All right. It was literally the imprint to move you back into harmony. Because what you'll realize is ultimately self-love is not like, oh yeah, I've accepted my flaws. No. Self-love is a relationship. It's a partnership. It is when two energies or two ideas, the lowest conscious part of you and the highest conscious part of you that is moving in the direction of each other, finally get on the same freaking page. Now, this is what we call zero point energy. And this is what we call balance. This is not, I'm trying to, you know, beat my darkness out of me or heal my darkness or my um, unlovable qualities or my limitations. This is not, you know, the, the lower part of you trying to get to heaven. This is the lower part of you remembering who it actually is because darkness doesn't exist. It's just an absence of light. It's just the, 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 the inability to remember that love. It's that, that pain. It's that trauma. It's that, you know, um, cold part of you. And this is why we've come. See, the ascension is not. We come to earth and save the humans. You know, it is, we have come here to integrate and collect all aspects of ourselves that have been floating out in the karmic purgatory of darkness and integrate them back in, right? And get them back, come on, everybody come home, right? And acceptance of yourself, which means the ultimate way, if you really want to biohack and get over there in 12 days, really, right? What parts of yourself have you not accepted? You, not your hubby, not your best friend, not your mother, not over there, 
What parts of you have you not accepted? This is it. Because we're just working in balance here. When we're too high or too low, we're too ethereal. See, the thing is, is the more light you get, the more you get lost in the idea of unity, right? If I turned on a light outside in the sun, you wouldn't notice it, right? Just like if I got rid of all of the light, who's in, what's in the dark, you wouldn't see. So really what it is, is this, this shadow space that is like, oh, shadow work is so, is so hard and so scary, but Ultimately, it's about becoming the shadow. It's about becoming the, the holographic image of the highest level of you and the lowest level of you and moving that into, right, unity. So what parts of you, okay, let's look at all different levels because in my work, I notice the sticky icky points, right, are usually around sexuality that are around codependency, that are around that neediness, that are around the lack of intelligence that they truly believe they are, okay? They don't feel qualified. They don't feel smart enough. They don't, they don't feel like they look the part, right? And so we're, we're trying outside of ourselves these attempts to fix those imperfections, and while we're fixing those imperfections, we wear the mask that's already perfect. And then we get triggered when someone knocks it off. And we've been playing this game for a really long time, even on the spiritual journey, right? The spiritual journey has taught us to move our bodies into this space of remembering and this, this knowing. And our intuition is there and our gifts are overflowing. But the, uh, what I've noticed the most is, is that how does it feel when none of that stuff is present? You know, when you're not channeling, when you're not meditating, when you're not in nature, when you're not connecting, giving some gift to someone else of, of, of what you see within them, when you're not holding space, when you're not on your game, who are we then, right? Because this is where we really want to spend time with over the next 12 days is can I accept maybe I'm not good with money? Can I accept that, you know, I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong in relationships. I don't know what's wrong with me over here. Again, can I accept my own help? Can I be my own gift, right? Can I be present with how I feel? Okay, because we're moving away from the era of call your best friend event and call your psychic to find out if this is your soulmate and, you know, spend thousands of dollars on, on philosophies of, of understanding spiritual natures. Really what would happen is if you just focused on you, all you would do is come back home to yourselves and imagine how much all of these versions of you know. Okay, say there's versions of you who have been lost in, you know, the multiverse for millions of years, like fractal pieces of your consciousness. I like to use the, uh, the analogy of the disco ball because it's just like spinning ball. But it's, it's the party, right? It's the fun. It illuminates. It changes the colors, right? It gets the party going. But if it was blown into a billion pieces, right, then if you look, one side is a mirror and the other side is opaque. So you could say, well, this is my shadow side or my opaque side or my dark side. And this is my reflective side that I get to reflect the party, reflect the fun, reflect the love on the other side of me. Well, I just absorb. I absorb all the light. I don't know who I am. Right. And so you have to understand that we've been searching for this in people, places and things. And this is why it feels 10 steps forward and 10 steps back. And so now we've moved into this threshold point where, you know, the earth has purging her lower frequencies and moving into higher realms. You know, the, the beings on earth are, are working internally in their own universal space to manifest a new world outside of them. You see, because the heaven that we have been taught about is within us and it is our job to birth it. It's not a place where, can I get my 5D ticket? It is something you physically have to birth within you. It is your child of all that you've ever been. It is your hopes, your dreams, your fantasies, your, your love. It is also 
your pain and your darkness and whatever else is lingering there. And all that has to be done here is unconditional love for each and every part of you now. Sick, can you love yourself being sick right now? Right? Broke, can you love yourself being broke right now? You know, alone, can you love yourself alone? Trapped, stuck, right? Can you love you in that story, right? Because until you fully accept, which is true definition of love and spirit realm, acceptance, then you cannot really get the help that you get, you really need. And here's why. Because karma is not like you're bad, here's your punishment, okay? Karma is cause and effect, bottom line. It's cause and effect. What you put out is what you get back. What you put out is what you get back. Now, it's not always instantaneous, right? And you're thinking, hey, all I've been doing since I woke up is good deeds. And I've been sacrificing and I've been helping and I've been, you know, taking care of everyone and I have my spiritual practice. Well, your ability to live a full level of vitality in 5D right now comes down to how much of you have done that for yourself. Right? I know it goes against the grain of everything we've ever been taught over here. That's just arrogant, superficial. That's, you know, like, think about it, though. So if I am focused in, in 20 different areas of my life, trying to keep everything afloat, and in that process, I have to leverage something, and the only leverage is me. So I have to take the focus off my own health or my own creativity to keep this money line held up over here. And I have to abandon myself because my relationship is not liking my, my sassiness right now. So I turned on my volume to hold my relationship up, okay? In the idea of karma, if there is only you in the universe, what is happening here? Rejection and abandonment for your surrogate reality. like. I've got to keep this relationship going or I'm going to lose everything, right? I've got to keep this working so that, you know, that this works, you know, and it, and what it comes down to ultimately is every single time that we abandon and reject ourselves for some outside pleasure, safety, or false security, then it acts like a karmic cycle for us. All right. So, and then, cause I've sat here and I've said, Literally, last 10 years, I have helped thousands. I mean, thousands, thousands. And, and you know, not all of it was an energy exchange. Some of it was just because that's who you are. You know, it's, it's helping someone clean up spilled baggage. It's, you know, it's, it's talking to your best friend. It's, you know, giving the shirt off your back. It's giving away your last $20. I mean, I think that empaths, that's just how we're wired, right? But at what expense? You know, right now, if you are in the world of spiritual practice and you're making a living or wanting to make a living at at your craft, you have to ask yourself, are you coaching and healing yourself first? Right. And I think that what we feel is that knowing and having these gifts equally make us like healed somehow. And and I believe that we do get indirect healing from healing others. Yes. But at what level of self-abandonment and self-rejection is playing will be the absolute result of what you're seeing right now. Like people, places, things, opportunities, events, okay? Relationship status, okay? And, And like how you feel about the world at large is nothing more than how this marriage is going on inside. Because you have to remember, like this darkest part of yourself, this lightest part of yourself had a baby. And this little inner child's like, can we just get along? I love dad. He's crazy. Mom, she's cuckoo, right? Can we just love everybody? I don't care what dad did. I don't care what mom did. I just love everyone. And when we really start to embrace the dark side of ourselves without needing to fix it, then we understand that all it ever needed to be was seen, heard, loved by you, 
not someone else. You know, we always say, I want someone to love my dark side. Well, can you, right? Do you feel attractive enough for your like, you know, dream person to show up at your door right now? You know, if, if opportunity knocked right now with your greatest opportunity, are you practiced? Are you prepared? Right? Are you prepared and are you practiced for your greatest opportunity? Probably the answer is no, because I'm waiting for the opportunity. Okay. But ultimately, you know, the idea of you go to school to get the education, to get the job is the practice, prepare, play method, even though it doesn't really work over there in that, that, that space. But the idea is that really you have 12 days and I highly recommend that you let go of the weight, the weight of waiting or the weight that you're carrying energetically, this lower frequencies, this humiliation, this shame, this guilt, this resentment, this fear, this anger that is lodged in different parts of your system. Because see, energy is, is alive. It has a consciousness, emotion. When not used or integrated becomes its own level of consciousness. So pain has a personality, right? Higher self doesn't want to be in a body that's in pain. It can't be vibrationally. It's not, it's not in the match of frequency. So higher self has to remain pulling you towards it through, right? Tough love, okay? An ego is pulling you into the pain to say, this is what is hurting us. This is how it's hurting us. So again, it's this push-pull idea. And so what we do is our relief comes from, okay, I can't deal with this. Let me deal with yours. How much easy is it, easier it is to figure someone else's stuff out? I mean, how much easier? Oh, yeah, you got that going on, right? It gives us value. Wow, I'm really good at helping. Well, what if I said, well, what's going on with your thyroid? What's going on with your money line? You're like, because mm -hmm. again, that's your blind spot. That's the place we don't want to look, right? It's the skeletons in the closet. It's the, you know, out of alignment stuff that's happened in our life. It's the ghosting of our own shadow. It's the disgust of certain parts, maybe of ourselves that we don't even know are there. So we're disgusted by others. It's fear. Okay. Now, one of the things that I'll say is probably right now is this 12 day doorway, this gateway is really about walking through the own shadow of your own death experience to have a baby of you. Like, who is you? What is you? I mean, if you think about it, if you have kids, they are the best and worst parts of you. Same with your, your partner. You're like, whoa. And you chose this, right? But in this idea, this me, myself, and I, the lower part, the higher part, the middle part, the baby, right? This child is going to be the one who is going to embody every part of you and act in your benefit in this fifth dimensional playground, the inner child will save the world guaranteed because the inner child just wants to play. The inner child doesn't care what color you are, what you did five years ago. It just cares about who you are right now. And who you are right now is and should be a byproduct of everything that you have been. I mean, if anything, darkness gives us a ton of wisdom. It gives us a ton of compassion. It gives us understanding. It gives us somehow security when things are not going well. Like you've lived a certain amount of years in the dark. You know how to do those darker nights of the soul. They're more familiar. Then that helps you hold space for other people, right? That are moving through those spaces. Because none of us want to go over there and have an empty playground. We feel kind of like that's our been our whole life. You know, it's like no matter where you go, you feel different. You feel the outcast. You feel separated. Or you're surrounded by millions of people and you really don't want any of them. Okay. And that is because the only one you ever really wanted was you. And this is the gift, right? And when we say, okay, this is the gift. This person taught me this. This person reminded me this. See, every time you're triggered, it's a remembrance of some part of your lower self or lower energy that's vibrating. Anytime you're inspired, that's your higher self. Now, when you're jealous, that's coming from your shadow side saying, I can't be inspired because it's not fair or I don't have what they have. But again, you guys, if you've been working with me for the last five years, what's my grand statement? Eyes on your own paper right? You're not here to be what other people are. 
But of course, you're going to see people with their volume on, right? And they're, they're out there sharing their light and they're, they feel fearless to you and they have courage. The only reason they have that is because they have themselves, right? They are the alchemy. They are acting as all of them. Because I am masculine, I am feminine, I am child, I am darkness, I am light, I am the past, I am the future, I am the parallel, I am choice, I am all of these things. And so you can see on top of that, with everything else that I've learned here, my toolbox is quite large, just like yours. But we're always looking at someone else's toolbox. We're always asking what someone else would do or should I do this or could I do this, right? So during this time, I have just a quick like go to, here's some quantum hypnosis for you. And again, quantum hypnosis is about asking questions. When you ask yourself questions, who's answering? You realize there's more people than just than you thought in there and you're not actually crazy. You are the universe. And in a universe, there is a planetary alignment. And if you think about it, like you think about like our little Milky Way here, and it's just like in that space of that little, little small universe over there, there's those planets, right? And they all have different personalities and different systems and different importances and different gravitational flows. And they do different things inside of you. You've got these chakras that are very similar to the same orbiting power, and they all have different, different aspect and a different point and a different, um, message and a different job. And when we accept this orbit, right, that my root and my sacral and my chakra and my heart and my throat chakra and my third eye and my crown are here to work in harmony, just like your astrology does, then you stop trying to interrupt and sh shut this system down and move away from it and rebuild it really quickly from the outside. It, it doesn't work that way. The fundamental space has to be solid. And that is all that's required for fifth dimension. We're not looking for perfect. We're not looking for rich. We're not looking for successful. We're not looking for beauty. We're not looking for necessarily like ecstatic joy. We're looking for balance. We're looking for fundamental understanding. We're looking for acceptance. We're looking for you to be able to receive love, give love, right? without circumstances, without consequences, can you be loving to this part of yourself? And what you'll notice is these relationships, investments, opportunities, businesses that go, right? What ultimately do they do for us? They bring us back home, right? It's like, I don't have you to siphon my energy to anymore or give my ideas to anymore or give my money to anymore or, you know, take care of anymore. All of a sudden we're abandoned and we're abandoned only because our root karma is that I have abandoned myself. So what happens naturally, that's higher self's love language is return to the scene of the grind and say, Okay, you just had a taste of what you really want. You just had a taste of love. You just had a taste of money. You just had a taste of this time and this freedom, right? So now that it's gone, how can you embody that? How do I embody money? What is my true wealth? My true wealth is my creativity. It's my ability to use all of me in every situation. Because, you know, sometimes, guys, sometimes, you know, we're whole hiding the dark part of ourselves or our unlovable part of ourselves or our broken parts, traumatic side of ourselves. But sometimes in situations, that's the very part you need. I mean, come on. When you get abandoned or rejection, who's really there for you, right? That critic in your head may not be helping you, but it's probably trying to come from a good place and say, well, you didn't abandon me. I wouldn't have to talk to you like this because abandon me, right? Abandonment is going to be the opposite of alchemy. Rejection comes when I have rejected a part of myself to be more outside, okay? How you become more is by bringing that in because then you're overflow. We don't give away our essence, we give away our extra, right? We, we become this 
huge vibrational orbit in harmony. Yep, light, dark. I see you. I hear you. Oh, you got this kinky fetish? Awesome, right? We're going to love that anyways. We're not going to hide it. We're not going to go try to get it psychotherapy out. We're going to accept it first and foremost because there's a part of me in this system that is a healer. There's a part of me in this system that is a doctor. There's a part of me in this system that is a mother and a father, right? And a child. And there's a part of me in this system that is sitting in pain. And so if I have part of me in pain, I also have alchemy, part of me that's not. And that is who I will bring in and sit with for the next 12 days. Because in this 12 ideas, like 12 dimensions, right? We've got these 12 chakras that we're using now. There's 12 days for us to really bring it in, bring it in, right? Okay, so what happens if this goes wrong? Who am I? What, go, what happens if I don't get this? Who am I? What happens if I lose everything? Who am I? What happens if this person leaves me? Who am I? This is what I would love for all of us, including me, to sit with next 12 days and examine where we are a little unbalanced because, you know, the bridge to get over here, you got to be balanced in order to get there. This is too high. You get too heavy in the density. You get lost in fear or you get lost in the grandiose idea of the hope and the infatuation and the excitement that leaves you disappointed and then shoves you back down into the other side. You're going to use all of you here, right? Because if you understand the sixth dimension, it's this understanding that you are a shapeshifter, that you are a multidimensional conscious being that can be and do and have time and space start to disappear. And you work in the fractal consciousness of all of you. You've heard the stories of like half unicorn and half, you know, mermaid. Well, think about this idea of alchemy here. Okay. Now that's a little like, like fantasy. I'm not sure any of you are like praying at night to be that, but wouldn't you love to be both a mother and a CEO successfully? Wouldn't you love to like still have your self-love intact and, and start turning that clock back on your age, right? Wouldn't you love to be able to do the things that you would desire if time, space, gravity were not limited, okay? Because 5D is where you balance and integrate all of you and you begin to play with this mysterious energy called infinite possibilities and you because you have accepted all that you are you can become more and until we do we're going to notice that it's one foot in and one foot out if you're trapped in obligations right if you feel very codependent on someone if you feel lost without someone's love right if you feel really uncomfortable in your own body, these are indicators that it's time for you to balance. And the more uncomfortable you get, it just means, doesn't mean you're manifesting it incorrectly. It means you're manifesting your next logical step, which means what do I need to get your attention? I was like, does this level of pain get your attention? Does this level of pain get your attention? Does this scary thing get your attention? Right? Because the solutions are in the problem. Okay. Literally, there's two sides to a coin. There's a heads and a tails. One side is dark, one side is light. You have to use the whole coin if you're going to have the money. Okay. We're going to use all of ourselves. So it's really about reflection. And can I have the ultimate level of compassion for myself for the parts of me that are not healed yet? Can I have the ultimate level of understanding that I'm still working through this money thing? Can I be there for myself? Or do I need to call someone else, right? This is where we really would want to focus this next few days because the analogy that I like to give, and I gave this to my class yesterday, is that if you've ever, and this is like a, a very like, you feel like you're going crazy here, this with this analogy. And if you've never experienced this, maybe you watch someone else experience this where you have been wanting to buy a bigger, better house in the process of selling your old house. Okay, so we're looking at the past, the void, okay, and the and the future, and this is where we are right now. These twelve days, this is like our escrow or our void energy, and so it's like if you've ever like wanting to sell your old house, but you need the abundance to use from that sell to buy the new house, and the new house is so much more of of who you are, 
right? But let's throw in some like some more very th scary things here. Let's say that that you're 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 really going to make the effort to take this leap to get this house, but it's expensive. Okay, that house over there that you lived in. It's not your dream house. It's breaking down. It's it's old. It's never been what you wanted. It's you know it's it's costed you more money, right? You haven't been happy. This new house is more money, but it has more of who you are in it. But you're going to have to grow financially, physically, emotionally, chemically to be able to afford consistency of living there. Okay, so we throw that. We throw that fear into the void. We throw the fear of letting go of the past where maybe we we're bitching and moaning all the time, but we were comfortable. Okay. I didn't have to stress over there. I could, you know, drink $10 Starbucks every day because my house is crappy, right? Over there. And then over there it is, I don't quite have my keys yet. Okay. And I'm not going to be able to afford the furniture and the landscaping right away. And I honestly don't know how I'm going to afford the mortgage after the first few months. And so here you are in this space, okay? And this is a good analogy because this isn't really who we are anymore, right? But there's a level of comfort there. There's a level of understanding. There's somewhat of an acceptance there. At least we have, you know, found things to do there, okay? And over there, we're going to have to be more focused, more consistent, more disciplined, more um, aligned with our own potential to even be able to sustain that. But that's who we really are, at least more of who we really are. And this place of the void is where like, it feels like purgatory, like, okay, like, what do I need to do? And if you've ever been in that situation, which I have, it's like, you're, you're super pissed at your processor. You're mad at the bank, right? You're like, why is it taking so long? And then they're, they're calling you and saying, well, we need proof of your um, identification from 25 years ago. And you're like, what? So this is kind of what it feels like right now, because it's like, you're being asked to produce these things from your processor in this void space to get you into alignment to qualify, right? For this upgraded space that you're actually terrified of having. But you know that you're just too big for that life, although it's comfortable. And you're scared of that one, but it feels more exciting. What do you do, right? If you're here right now blaming processors and banks and your spouse and you're pissed off at the way that the system is run and, you know, and Federal Reserve and money, that would keep you stuck and maybe lose this house and get stuck with this house. All right. So what I recommend if you want a quantum leap over here, okay, turn within. Great. What is this reflection of? What is this identity that they want to know about? Why is this stuff from the past coming up right now? Why is this person from the past coming back? Why is this old trigger here? Why I haven't dealt with that trigger in months. Why am I now feeling like I'm not good enough? Why am I now feeling like I deserve this? Is it because I'm secretly afraid? Yes. This is your 12 days of surround yourself with 12 mirrors and say, it's time for me to fall in love regardless of what's going on in here. Okay. Yeah. It's like the bank calls. Oh, did you have a bankruptcy 12 years ago? And you're like, oh, humiliation, right? Well, that's going to be part of your 12 days. Yes, you did. And yes, you did. And yes, you did. And yes, you did. And right. And the third dimensional system is completely flawed for you to fail. Even the best of the best of the best of the best fail in 3D. All right. Because it isn't designed to win. It's designed to separate, it's designed to contract. So think about it. There's been some amazing people in the world that have failed. Come on. And they've been out, they've been the alchemy of themselves, apparently, right? So again, failure is part of the third dimensional training to build backbone, build your funny bone, build your memory, remind yourself and rehome right? It's a repurpose opportunity. We have become the mosaic and it's time for us to now make a piece of art and say, yeah, that piece is kind of broken and chipped, but it fits right here. This part of me has an evil streak, but guess what? I'm not going to use it for evil tendencies. I'm actually going to use it for its wisdom because there's a lot of 
wisdom and methodical manipulation in wisdom. If it was channeled through love, what could I be? What could I do with that? What could I see the potential of? Because it is about right now integrating limits, not opportunities. Limits, 12 days of integrating limits. Limits, 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 limits. Problems, 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 problems. Bring them in. Great. I got all these problems. Okay. Bring them in. All the things that I have been pushing away and ghosting that seem to be ghosting me over there. If you feel like you're being ghosted over there, it's because you're ghosting yourself over there. I know this from fact. Okay. So integration. Me, myself, and I, it's time to get real. It's time to look in the mirror. And this is exactly why I created Quantum Fitness, because it's not a fitness program. It is the, the, the integration of the me, myself, and I. It is the aspects of, of everything, every fractal perception of your own projector. It is the past, the present, the future. It's the body. It's the trauma. It's the pain. It's the, it's the ultimate success. It's the wisdom. It's everything that we are constantly seeking in other people's that is literally right here in your own toolbox. And what you are drawn to others is what you contain. So a lot of times we're left and abandoned to get pushed back home. And only you, universe, you know, your little Milky Way here with all of your planetary alignments, getting in alignment, getting balanced, will be smoothly riding into this new playground. And the best thing about it, here's the best thing about it, is once you get over there, there's other people that are in alignment. Do you know people like this yet where you're just like, ah, oh, you feel like peace. I don't need to coach you. I don't need to save you. I don't need to rescue you. I don't need to gift you. You know, you're not clinging on me. Wow. Bunch of sovereign, awesome, expansive, created, enlightened, joyful people that are not judging where you came from. Well, how'd you get here? Right alignment, because you wouldn't even get over it without alignment. Alignment is when you start to play with all the different fractals of your own consciousness, and you get to be this and this and this and this and this, and ultimately you realize that you are the gift that you seek. And this idea of Christmas, right? The Christness, this Christ consciousness, this crystalline energy frequency of your heart that you realize, wow, I could walk in the image because I know what it feels like to be over there. And I know what it feels like to demonstrate this. And your demonstration will come secondary. Your demonstration right now, look at your own behavior and see, is this expanding my personal relationship with myself or is this helping other people expand their relationships? And it's not that you don't love them or care about them, but guess what? When you do this for them, you do them a very big disservice because ultimately you can't do this for them. You cannot bring people into higher level of consciousness, but because of the way gravitational works in the 3Ds, people who are more gravitational dense can pull you down. So are you worried about going alone, right? I'm going to go over there alone. You can't. You can't because once you integrate your alchemy process, your all of me, then interesting enough, because it's your holographic space, anything that you love will be over there waiting for you. All right. So take this opportunity, you guys, to return home, okay, to have your own birthing of your own baby Jesus, right? Your own process of becoming this fifth dimensional version of yourself, which is all about acceptance, self-compassion, self-understanding, self-awareness, self-sovereignty, self-freedom, self-abundance. And yes, there might be some discomfort in that position, what feels like waiting, but my recommendation, guys, don't wait. Practice, prepare, play. Practice, prepare, play. What do I need to do? Here's the questions I ask myself every single morning if I don't feel like things are moving like a fast river, okay? First of all, what am I doing, right? That, that is out of alignment with my greatest expansion. What am I doing? Okay. And what am I not doing that could get me to my greatest expansion? Because there's something that you're doing and then there's something probably you're not doing. Okay. That is a very important thing. And you have to say, well, first of all, what's my alignment over there? What's your greatest self when you close your eyes, right? It's expansive, it's love, it's self-love, it's abundance. 
what are you doing that is taking your eyes off of that goal, that, that development, that universe, okay? Put your eyes back there. Now, what should you be doing? That's not a good word, but right now we've got 12 days, we're gonna use it, okay? So what could I be doing that would help expand that more, right? Well, I really should declutter the closet and just make space for new opportunity. Okay. And, and that is what you're being pulled to do. Think about the things that you're being pulled to do that you're just like, oh, that seems silly right now. Do those things. Okay. Second set of questions I ask myself every single day, right? If I start to feel any thread of fear, any thread of fear, any thread of judgment, this is where I go. Judgment. Hello. Right. You're not bad. You're just an indicator that I'm in self-preservation. What do I need to find out about myself here? Fear. Oh, okay, I need to ask myself some questions here. Here we go. Fear, right? What am I afraid to lose? That is your question. Second question. What have I already lost that I'm afraid to feel again? Okay, that's it. You stick with those questions over the next 12 days, you'll clean it up naturally. Because again, higher self is literally like right there waiting. I'm here. This is why you're struggling. This is why you're trapped. This is why you're stuck. So you will look within, you'll look within, you know, the darkness is right. It's not happy, but it's never been happy. You're just paying attention to it now. Right. So now we're going to integrate. We're one big, happy family. You know, we're a minivan full of noxious, hungry kids that are saying, are we there yet? And you're going to figure out how to love all of them and keep all of them happy by being present, present. That's it. That's all that's required is, okay, no one's coming to save me. No one's coming to help me. He doesn't hear me. She doesn't see me. I can't manifest that over there. I had to sort of come home. That's it. That's it. And I will tell you, this is what creates the possibilities outside of you. You think that working very hard to get your resume is going to get you what you want. That does not get what you want. Getting your universe gigantic pulls opportunities to you pulls opportunities straight. you. Here I am, 46 years old, just being a, a wild, free, you know, banshee of, of spirit and science on the internet. And I get a call from a major fitness and sports magazine that has been around since the day I was born and says, we want to talk to you about science fitness. And would you be interested in doing the cover? Now, I could say, holy shit, I got to go get ready for that. I'm not prepared. See, I already am prepared. I already am practiced. You want me to wear a bikini today? I'm there, right? Sign me up. Matter of fact, this is why I'm recording early because I'm about to get on a plane to fly into the future to the beach and do a photo shoot at 46 years old, which this wasn't even my highest joy, but this is an opportunity for me to expand my ability to share what I know and move it into a mainstream context. And that is what self-work is. And that may seem small to you, but to me, that's huge because I came from nothing and I've gone through the fraud complex. I've gone through the rejected and abandonment and the broke and the sick phases of my life. And it was until I brought all of those in and said, how can we work together here that I said, you know what? Screw it. You know, everybody's going to leave. I'm just going to have the best party by myself. And having the best part of myself and having my own world and my own party has created my biggest opportunities. So I hope you use this 12 days to your advantage. And I will see you on the flip side.